Okay, here we go. A big question of our time is, should we have a mission to Mars? If you're a science or tech enthusiast, chances are your immediate reaction is, of course. It's in human nature to explore. Think of all the things we can learn. Think of the inspiration that such a mission would give to our children. But if you happen to be more of a social welfare person, when you learn about the potential costs of going to Mars, which will easily top $100 billion, your immediate reaction is, why would we waste so much money on a trip to Mars when we could use that money for so many better things right here on Earth? We could improve countless lives of the homeless, feed the hungry, provide better health care, and so much more. So the real question becomes, is it in humanity's interest to do an inspirational mission to Mars? The answer to this question is simple. No, it's not. Having a mission to Mars is absolutely pointless in much the same way it was pointless to go to the moon and to never return. We haven't been back to the moon since 1972, nearly 50 years ago. And in the last 50 years, we've slowly gone backwards in our space travel technology, which culminated in 2011 with the last US-based human flight to space when we retired the space shuttle. That's right, the United States has not had a way to send humans into space for nearly a decade. We've relied on the Russians for sending our astronauts into space. Yeah, it's crazy, but I digress. So it's hard to argue that going to the moon was inspirational for our kids when 50 years later, we can't even send people to space much less to the moon. A mission to Mars would be equally pointless and an incredibly expensive exercise if all we hope to do is inspire children. However, what if we looked at going to Mars from a different perspective? What if we looked at it from a social welfare perspective? To answer that question, we have to look a little deeper into history. And I don't mean just human history. You see, Earth and life on Earth have been around for more than three billion years. But human level intelligence has only been around for a tiny fraction of that time, at most for about 200,000 years. But it's just been in the last 100 years that some really important things have happened, which are critical for us to review in order to answer the Mars question. In the last 100 years, we've come to a definitive realization that extinction level events are common in Earth's history. In fact, there have been several extinction level events, including massive volcanic eruptions and even massive asteroids that have struck Earth that have wiped out more than 90% of life on Earth in each case. That would not be fun. Also, in just the past 100 years, we've become smart enough or dumb enough, depending on your point of view, to create man-made potential disasters like nuclear bombs and biological weapons that could totally wipe out humans. Fantastic. We didn't have enough natural disasters to worry about. Now we got to worry about man-made ones too. And in the last 50 years, we have also learned that the trajectory of progress is not always positive. In a short period of time, we developed all the technology needed to go to space and to other planets, used that technology to land humans on the moon, then lost our ability to even go into space. <sighs> there are no guarantees that we'll get better at space travel over time. Literally the opposite has occurred in the last 50 years. So when you look at these things holistically and put them in perspective with the previous three billion years of life, you come to a simple realization. The window of opportunity for humans to explore space and other planets and possibly other stars is not always going to be around. And knowing that extinction level events are pretty normal and now also possible by man-made events, you're welcome, it's humanity's social responsibility to ensure our survival long-term. So how do you make sure humanity can survive long-term? The answer to that question is simple. We have to colonize other planets in a self-sustaining way, not just visit them with a one-time mission. That's why a mission to Mars is absolutely pointless. We can't just go to Mars to see if we can get there and come back. That cannot be our goal. Because after such a mission, if we call it done, there's no reason to go back. And over time, we will likely lose the technologies that got us there in the first place, just like we did with the moon. Instead, our mission must be to colonize other planets as an insurance policy for humanity's survival. And we should start with whatever planet is the easiest to colonize. And it just so happens that Earth Earth's closest neighbor is a rocky planet similar to Earth with all the resources necessary to support life. That's Mars. It almost seems too conveniently positioned not to do this, doesn't it? Like it was meant to be. Sure, colonizing Mars has some incredibly hard challenges to overcome. Colonizing requires enormous amounts of materials to be transported to the new planet. Everything from mining equipment to manufacturing to agriculture to shelter would have to be self-sustained on Mars. And to get Mars to a self-sustaining point, we 
would need a sort of getting started with a new planet starter kit to provide all of the fundamental supplies. Estimates of what it would take to get Mars to be self-sustaining is on the order of a million tons of material. That's about the weight of four 50-story skyscrapers worth of materials. It's a lot, but it's also doable. All of these challenges are within the current abilities of human technology. And the key word here is current abilities. There is no way for us to know how long we'll continue to have these technologies. Using today's technology, we would need roughly 200,000 Falcon 9 launches to get that much material to Mars. 200,000 launches is a lot, but remember, there was a time when we had no airplanes flying the skies, and today there are nearly 100,000 commercial flights per day. But ideally, we would use a much bigger rocket than the Falcon 9, one that is easily reusable and costs a lot less to launch. And fortunately, there are people working on these problems, but it will take federal support to make a mission to colonize Mars a reality. We need to have a long-term approach and make it an important part of the federal budget. So back to the $100 billion cost thing. Let's put that cost in perspective. $100 billion is less than what the credit card transaction fees would be for the more than $3 trillion we've spent on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan alone. And in the next decade, we'll spend around $10 trillion. That's $10,000 billion on military spending. $100 billion is just 1% of that expense. Seems to me that spending less than a percent of our defense budget to guarantee humanity's long-term survival is a damn good investment to defend humanity from extinction. What do you think? Leave a comment with your thoughts. I'll try to respond to all the comments that should get a response. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, sharing the video, and subscribing to the channel. Till next time. That was a short video.